running back, a position where we don't want to be reaching for players. We don't want to be looking at guys who, again, are past foundation players that wouldn't make sense now to be in on a Cook or a Camara. But in your recent draft that we did the show about just earlier this week, you came down with the three foundation guys. And for me, the running back position, even more in Dynasty than in Redraft, which you know maybe sounds funny for listeners who know how we like to play Redraft, but you're looking for an absolute star or you're looking for very late zero RB types of players. And so we're going to have that mix again of the very high end and the very low end nothing spent in between and those high-end guys unless you're getting a big discount which will occasionally happen the dynasty market gives you this little opportunity from time to time with these veteran running backs that they just become so cheap that we're looking at dynasty running backs as really being a season to season proposition that it makes sense to go ahead and get out there and get in that but how are you looking at running back we know that we're building our team through the wide receivers but Running back points could be the thing that puts a team over the top once you get to those fantasy semifinals and you're facing down three other very good teams. I think to your specific question, the way that I like to play it is to be as strong as possible at wide receiver in a normal room like we have in our other league. And then it it gets back to this idea where we were kind of starting this show uh, from this concept of how to win your startup draft. If you win your startup draft through the position that maintains the most value, wide receiver, especially if you can do it with young receivers that then hit, you're going to have opportunities to then try to trade into running backs because there's going to be teams in your dynasty league over the next couple of years who realize their their team isn't trending the right direction and they want to then get out of running back risk, if you will, and try to get into some receivers. And so that those opportunities do arise. You just talked about one where we didn't even trade any of our young receivers. We traded... Michael Thomas, Otto Beckham, and Juju Smith-Schuster and moved into Saquon. So the thing, I think the really hard thing when you're playing Dynasty and you're always passing up these big names for the young players is this idea that I just can't have my favorite players on on my team. Well, a lot of times you can. (laughs) You can then come back around and do it. We talked in a recent show about the the drafter in my startup who made some trades back and then moved into Patrick Mahomes and basically didn't lose any value from that. And I think netted some future draft pick value. If you're, you know, taking a really strict accounting of it in our draft, we moved back, accumulated a lot of value. And then ultimately we got to a point where we said, okay, we, we, I think we drafted both Austin Eckler and Aaron Rodgers, but moved them both before the end of the draft to come all the way back up and get into Kyler Murray. This idea that when you're moving back and accumulating a lot of options and a lot of young pieces and a lot of overall value that's spread out and has the potential to gain. And even when these players aren't particularly productive, doesn't necessarily lose value year to year. It allows you the opportunity when you're ready to then go out and pay top dollar for a top dollar running back if you want to. And I think that's sort of the path. I mean, I don't know if we've talked about it a lot on the show, but we were trying to acquire Christian McCaffrey this offseason as well. So potentially, and using young receivers and picks to do it, but potentially McCaffrey and Barkley would have been acquisitions for us. I think that's the way that, if I'm scripting out the, the perfect plan, that's the way to get the running back points. The second side of it, naturally, and this is one that I'll always hat tip Chris Patrick on, but I see him do it in some rookie drafts and leagues that we're in um, is, is attacking the running back position early in rookie drafts because you're getting them as rookies and you have the early production. And then you have a lot of times, a lot of production year one in that window after year one to trade you guys, you mentioned you, you did that with Javante Williams in your other league. And so it's sort of twofold. Sean, you and I are always going to want to take the receivers in rookie drafts in the first round, but I think you basically don't have, you can go almost full zero RB if you're doing sort of a productive struggle. If you're not really trying to contend in year one, it is not that hard to get running back talent then onto your team through rookie drafts. It was tough in 2022 because the running back class wasn't particularly deep, but typically it's a little deeper and you can get some solid players. Uh, and you don't necessarily always have to use them at the very high pick. I mean, I, 
I go back to Alvin Kamara, one of the first years I was playing, and he was like an early second round pick in most rookie drafts. You can get those types of guys. Maybe James Cook winds up being that type of player. I don't know. You know, it's not a guy we're particularly high on. We do really like Rashad White, but you can take some swings at running back in the rookie draft, and you can use that youth and that depth that you've built to try to acquire veteran running back production that essentially gets discounted. It's like those running backs that were drafted in the startup are like the, the new car that right when you drive it off the lot, they're going to start losing value. And for especially for those teams that aren't product, uh, uh, aren't competitive into year two and into year three, they're going to want to move those pieces as much as they can. They're going to want to get as much as they can get for them. But as long as you're patient, eventually they're going to want to just move them for what they can get. Um, so you have that opportunity then to target players and move back into them in trade. So, yeah, I mean, I think it's pretty clear to, from the startup perspective, to be trying to build through the positions that hold their, their value the most, which wide receiver is at the top of that list, quarterback and super flex is at the top of that list. And then, um, youth as well, which we talked about is going to hold value or gain value the most. And when you've done that successfully, you can then move back into pieces that have lost value since your startup in a year. That's a great point on trading for the pieces. And you look at the running backs and where they're valued in your startup. You look at the young wide receivers. That gap is going to close almost regardless of how the players play. And the piece that a manager who embarks on a rebuild is going to want those young wide receivers and even the ones who aren't the stars. I mean, that's one of the things that you will also see in that trade market is just a young wide receiver who plays some. It doesn't have to be a superstar. You're going to be able to get out of him to those running back values. Looking at some of the prices here in startups, another sort of intriguing way to me to play this if you are relentlessly trading down in that startup will be to take a couple of these young guys who are still young, but the price is interesting because they've had some hiccups. So right now, Travis Etienne, the 412, J.K. Dobbins, the 504, those are guys that I'm targeting in redraft. And one of the things that I kind of like is that the players that I'm on the heaviest in redraft in my redraft approach are almost always good dynasty acquisitions for me as well. I think if you try and hit on a couple of the young guys and in this season because as you just pointed out 2022 is not going to have any running back depth to where those guys fall down through but you can give yourself a little bit of flexibility by selecting a couple of these guys i think the first two players that blair and i took last year were actually etn and javante williams then everything comes sort of crashing down with the etn injury and we don't have that but that gives us a little bit of flexibility to where if we were to hit on the other pieces and like you're talking about in the startup that you're in even in that first year, you would have this path to be competitive. You have those two running backs, and if you're competitive, then suddenly you have the running back firepower you need. If you're not competitive, you can move back out of them. And again, in this case, what you have to do is you have to move back out of the one who is actually good, right? So we hold on to ETN in that situation. We move Javante Williams. Depending on where your team is, you could do the opposite way. We talked about that with a couple of the players earlier. But that, again, creates this optionality. And so we like that element of it you can do it a variety of different ways if you've moved way down and you're relentlessly moving back in that startup you have a situation where you might actually be targeting the wide receivers even below that so you gave some examples of young wide receivers who are available late you get a big block of them and then it kind of sparked for me when you were talking about these running backs and if you have the patience, and it's not particularly fun, but if you have the patience to wait two years, you can probably build an even more dominant type of team. But one of the things is if you're trying to hit those rookie running backs the following season, you may actually need to move down more than you realize. You can move out of your first four or five round picks and still build a team that is so good that you're not even looking at a pick in the top two or three selections. So if you need some incentive to move back more, think in terms of, you know, I might want that first year team to be even a little bit weaker. That's something that I think is interesting because there can get to be a point where you're like, I've got to start making some picks.